and I'm excited to have uh, my brother who just requested to join live. Let's bring him in here, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hand to the stage. The one, the only, Jerome Shaw. Where my brother at? Let's let's bring him in here. What up, Infinity? Wahe Guru. Wahe Guru. Wahe Guru. Wahe Guru. Brother, what's happening, family? My man, how you feeling today? Hey, feeling electric, brother. Electric. I love it. You look electric. Hey, appreciate you, family. What's man. going on, man? We're uh, currently in Florida right now. I'm at this little uh, Hispanic shop that has uh, got some of the best coconut water I've ever had. And uh, I'm extremely grateful for it. <laughs> yeah, man. You in that sunshine state, brother. We are in the sunshine state soaking in all these rays, baby. And I love it. Mm -hmm. You were just here recently, yeah? Yeah, I was there, um, I guess, about a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah, I was at that uh, event with Devon and, um, and the fam, the Brett family, yeah. Mm -hmm. Surrounded by uh, good people all the time, right? Great people, bro. Great people, wonderful beings, man. Like, Florida, they doing some things down there. It's a vortex, man. You already know it. <laughs> we, we are the vortex, baby. Mm -hmm. We are the vortex. So, look, let's dive right in. All right, we got about 45, 50 minutes here. Probably going to go catch my flight. Um, in a world where we are constantly bombarded by distractions, you drive down the street and there's all these things that are just pulling your mind in so many directions. You're sitting in the car and what's vibrating? Your phone pulling your mind in a different direction, right? You start to walk down the street, you start to smell things that trigger emotional reactions within you that force you to do something. You see things, right? The eyes, you see things, and these things also bring back past memories and past experiences. And a world full of distractions, how do we stay focused? How do we stay focused on the mission? This IG Live right here is going to be focused on this idea of autonomy from a lady that both Jerome and I have, um, I don't want to say looked up to, but I guess, you know, in a way of studying, modeling after quite a little bit and um, just kind of taking information from wherever it can come, uh, all from the source of God. And so, Jerome, brother, I'm super excited to have you for my audience to meet you. Let's dive into it. Give me your 60 second elevator pitch. We just got into the elevator. We got 60 seconds. Let me know who you are in 60 seconds. Let's get into it. Oh, who I am in 60 seconds? <laughs> uh, who am I? You know, I see myself as a seeker. I see myself as, you know, someone who seeks to be a light in the world, you know? Someone who wants to inspire others the way that I'm inspired by others. You know, I want to be one of those people that, you know, others say, if he can do it, then I can do it too. Yeah. Such a warming introduction. <laughs> Thank you for that. So um, let's dive in. So I would like to ask you first, um, how did you first hear about this whole, what is your perspective of autonomy? Let's start off with the big picture and then we'll kind of reverse engineer it. Um, what is your perspective of autonomy and you feel it's something that you yourself are attracted to? Yeah, you know, some aspects of it I am attracted to. You know, certain aspects of freedom, liberation, same as with pranic living and pranic nourishment, it's like, but it's same, same, but different. You know, there are different qualities, different characteristics, and it's kind of like a, a completely different philosophy, but it has some similar vibes, you know? So there's some, there's certain aspects of it that I'm drawn to, while other aspects I'm not as drawn to, you know, they don't really, they don't really seduce me, you know? Yeah. And you're the type of man that likes to be seduced, right? Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> From time to time, you know. You know how it is. From it's all energy, time. baby. It's all energy. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what for you, like, what is autonomy? Like, based off just kind of what you learn 
um, the people that you hang around and the information you've been taking in, like, if anyone were to ask you, like, oh, what is autonomy? Like, what is your, like, what is your answer for that? Yeah, you know, from what I was gathering last night when Anastasia Zilevich and Ivana, um, thankfully she was translating. I appreciate yeah, both shout of out, them. Shout out Ivana, by the way. Shout out Ivana. Yeah, shout out Ivana for sure. You know, like, um, just to just to be in that energy field, I'm sure that she's picking up on so many things. I'm sure her software is being upgraded. Every time that you're around an individual or somebody who has done a lot of work on themselves, I feel like you pick up on that energy signature as well. You know, it's, it's kind of like the way that when we got to each other uh, in New Jersey and you were taking me to different parks and places and we were going on hikes and walks and this way and that way, like we were picking up on each other's energy, you know? And that's kind of like autonomy where she described it as very for the collective, you know, very for the community, sort of like how you have your groups, you have the free prana group, you have the freedom fasting group, you know, and that synergy of everyone on one accord, people speaking with each other, talking with each other, showing themselves, getting vulnerable, getting deep about their wins, their triumphs, but also their struggles, their adversity and the things that they overcome and just allowing themselves to be seen in that way. I think that's part of what autonomy is. Yeah. So it seems like uh, it's really a more an idea of like a community, but like very focused though. Mm. Would you agree with that or no? Well, focused how, what do you mean? Because in a way it's like, we're focused on freedom in the community, right? Freedom of all things. It's not, she's, the idea that she kind of clearly stated was this idea of like no food, no sleep, no drink, and even no money. But what is needed is community. And so it's like, it's purely focused on this intention of being around like-minded people that are also focused on freedom. Yeah, you know, like with, with the pranic nourishment, we kind of like to say things like, um, connection nourishment, you know, like conversation cuisine, you can really feel the vibe of another person really sink in deeply in a conversation and feel your energy lifted, like you really feel fed and you feel nourished by a good interaction with someone. Whereas with autonomy, she kind of put it or framed it in a way where it was like, connection currency, you know, like this is more, it was like, this is a better transaction than money. You know, giving love to somebody, expressing yourself with somebody, being having having that dance of dialogue with a person is like its own form of payment. Like they're paying you by giving you the opportunity to give, you know, and that's that fascinates me. I was like, wow, I was blown away. Yeah, yeah very much so, especially like when we live in such a world that's uh, like we work our whole lives for what? For money and then to eat and then to have a place to live. And now there's this whole new perspective of um, there's something greater than money. And would you say that that was something that you were kind of aligned with when she was speaking? Or was these one of the things that, you know, you were just kind of processing and maybe you don't have a conclusion for your own life with that perspective right now? I'm still processing, you know, those are some things that I, I was able to download and they're still integrating into my operating system, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like, um, yeah, the file is still finding its way through my systems. Yeah, I gotta say, like, uh, I'm like, a, I'm like a crazy processor because, like, uh, when I hear something and it, like it rings my bells, I'm like, all right, I gotta try this out, like ASAP. <laughs> I'm like, how quickly can I try this out? So for me, like, I gotta go down to Virginia um, this weekend as soon as I get back to New Jersey, and I gotta stay down there for like four or five days, and like. Uh, my Kudalini yoga teachers, because I'm going down there for a Kudalini, they're all um, like above like 50 years old and they're all freaking out like with the uh, COVID stuff right now. Okay. It's like they don't want anyone to like stay with them. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So like I'm literally like, think, like thinking about like all the other ways I can reach out to other people there that I might may know or that they can introduce me to so I could find a place to like stay. Because I can get a hotel. I'm not worried about getting a hotel. But I'm like, when I heard her talk about like, we have brothers and sisters everywhere. So why not just tap into the energies that already exist? And I'm like, that's facts. And so I'm like, yo, 
how do I manifest this like real quick, you know, real quick. <laughs> yeah. So, so what was one of the other things that, uh, rung your bell, so to speak? I really resonate with this idea of community. And what I can kind of share with that is, um, I realize like when I'm by myself, like that's when all my urges to eat actually come up. It's not when I'm around people. Mm. Like when I'm around people, like we're so focused, like we're having so much fun, whether we're meditating together, singing mantras together, the Guru, right? Whatever it is, when I'm around people, it can be anybody, like old, young, homeless. When I'm around people, the only thing that I think about is service in that moment, service for them and service for myself. Now it becomes interesting when I leave that environment because then it's like a lot of my old subconscious patterns come back and it's like, wow, you just did a lot of things. What do you want to do now? Why not go eat something or why not go drink something? Right. And I'm like, and then I go and experience that and I'm like, what am I doing with it? And so one of the things that like, I'm literally sitting here thinking about, and it's quite interesting with this trip down in Florida, cause like, it's all kind of like coming together as it needs to. And that is, is like me always being around people mm. and I have the energy for it. Like I have the energy to always be around people. Um, and so hearing how she kind of lives her life that way, we didn't get to hear in detail how she does it, but just hearing kind of like a big picture of it. Um, that was, I was really attracted to that. Like a lot. Bro, you, you just defined autonomy. Like, in a, uh, like that was it. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> that was it, bro. Yeah. You know, the feeling like you're very aware. You've always been very aware, like an aware individual to me, Elijah. So the way that you just described, the feeling that you get when you're around others and you're not thinking about those things, they're not running in your, in your program. Like they're not running in your subconscious mind. But once you get away from them, all of a sudden, all these things start to come to you and you start thinking like, oh, well, well, maybe I should go do this or maybe I should go do that. But you weren't thinking that when you were with them. So I feel like that's exactly what she was trying to tell us. Yeah, yeah and then uh, there was that movie that she wrecked. What was that movie? You know the name of it. The Circle. Yeah, The Circle. Dude, she called that out, bro. She was like, you guys all need to watch this movie, The Circle. Uh, I remember when you sent me the video of her saying that, and I literally went and watched the movie, and I'm like, oh, I didn't get it. And then, like, everything that's happening right now, I'm like, oh, my God. I totally get it. Like, she literally called out the fact that we're all going to be, like, secluded. We're going to be stuck in the house, and, like, the phones are going to start, like, just kind of, like, ruling everything, and how, like, people are always, like, watching and stuff. And, like, it's interesting just the whole vibration that comes when you can remove all these attachments and desires and these needs that you think that you need mm -hmm. and you can step into your state of like truth in a way, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, Oh, Mike said it's a new movie on, on his list as well. Shout out to Mike. Yeah. Yo, Mike, you, you're going to love that movie, bro. I already know you. <laughs> um, all right, so there was that. Let me ask you this, because this was also very interesting. I know in the fasting communities that I'm involved in, uh, one of the big things when it comes to fasting or stepping away from the idea of uh, thinking that you need food is cleaning yourself first, right? Like thoroughly cleaning yourself, going on long juice fast, cleaning your colon, making sure everything is clean before you ever enter the stage of no food, no water, and to be able to consistently go the distance with it. Last night, when I was listening to the, your replay with your interview with her, she was like, uh, just go in, like, just start tomorrow, like, just start. What are your thoughts on that, Jerome? Yeah, man, she said, just dive in, just dive in, you know? <laughs> what is that? You know, like, um, I think she's that type of individual as well. And also, that's one of the things that I respect about that Russian philosophy, the Russian mindset. They kind of just, they don't beat around the bush. You know, they're not here to play games. They're not here to, you know what I mean? They're, they're straightforward. They're blunt. They, they're, you know, not about caring. You know, they, they can hurt your feelings. It's, you know, they can say what they want to say. And they're not about trying to tiptoe around things. It's like kind of head on, taking things head on. So... That's one of the things I respect about her. 
is that she's not waiting around for for herself to to feel like oh I'm I'm fully clean now now I can go into autonomy she's like I'm going to go straight into autonomy you know I'm going to go straight into dry fasting just after eating some chocolate or just after having an avocado or a cucumber whatever she has like she just goes straight back in you know she takes a step back and then she takes three steps forward you know so it's very um it's a very interesting philosophy of course not everyone carries that but i respect it because she's fearless enough to understand that you know if she believes that her body can take it then then it can take it and i've heard her say that when she's in the dry state the body becomes like its own furnace you know it'll burn up whatever's in there after a while you know when you're in that dry state it's going to get obliterated it becomes like you know a fireplace in there yeah yeah that's beautiful and so i'm curious for you cuz um i remember when we were in new jersey I, this was our first time hanging out in person, me and you. And uh, no, uh, some of you guys may not know this, but Jerome and I, uh, we like stayed in the same house when he came to Jersey. And uh, it was like, like 1 a.m. And like, I'm trying to sleep. And this dude's over here working out. I'm like, bro, like, what are you doing? Go to bed. And he's like, nah, he's like, we ain't sleeping. I'm like, what do you mean you're not sleeping, bro? He's like, nah, we ain't sleeping, bro. And I'm like, bro, you're not eating, you're not drinking, and you're not sleeping. Like, what are you on, dude? And he was like, uh, he's like, now nah, there's just, there's this new perspective that I came across. And the perspective was this woman that we're speaking about who's kind of, would you say she's leading? Like, I don't want to say leading, but like, she's like one of the teachers when it comes to people that are trying to transition, just learn more about this idea of autonomy, right? Is that, is that safe to say? I definitely would say she's a pioneer. You know, she's a, she's a pioneer in this time. She's one of the people that are a lot more vocal than others. I think that there's a lot more people living these types of lifestyles than we realize. But even with the advent of social media and technology, there's just not as many people putting themselves out there to be exposed in that way for, you know, whatever their reasons are, maybe for, you know, the judgment that they don't want coming their way or the questions that they don't want coming their way or just maybe they're just peaceful people or private people that just don't want others interfering with their lifestyle, you know, who knows, but I really truly believe that um yeah it's it's getting to a lot more people than we realize and it's just full steam ahead it's not going back yeah yeah and so you introduced me to like kind of the videos of her educating and just speaking on her philosophy of this idea of autonomy um what was it like for you to be able to like sit down and have a conversation uh with her and Yvonne and like be able to ask like you know your questions to her like like how was that experience for you it was groovy man it was groovy. It was really cool. I enjoyed the experience. <laughs> you know, I always enjoy being able to interact with people internationally, you know, on that global level where even if there's a language barrier, love transcends all language. You know, love is like a universal language, the language of the heart. And when you're speaking with your heart, you can feel somebody. There were even times where I noticed that when I was speaking with her, even if she didn't consciously like understand what I was saying, she she was able to pick up, you know, on what I was putting down. Like she she started smiling. She could understand me on that level. So there's just certain things that just connect us and transcend language. So that's those are the types of things that uh, I really go for and I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, it's such a beautiful experience too. Cause like I've seen her in some interviews and like she's just answering the questions, but like you guys had such beautiful energy. You guys were just vibing the whole time and i'm like yo they could totally be on here for like hours and hours and hours <laughs> and you gotta love those experiences so um let me ask you jerome do you feel everyone should try out or actually before i ask that where would you say you're at in your journey of autonomy the idea of no food no drink no sleep and no money where would you say that you're at like in that journey or on a completely different journey or like like where would you say that you know you align or where you disalign with it yeah i'm still in the exploration stage of it all you know i'm fairly new to all of this in the in the big scheme of things in the big scope of things i mean we can see people were talking about this in the 70s and 80s and people thought they were crazy bro like you're crazy what are you doing what are you talking about like how are you living this way i don't buy it you're lying you're, you're lying you know people so many people were were chastised, were scorned, were just, 
shamed, you know, for coming out and speaking their truth. And all they were doing were just talking about their own experiences. So when I feel like I'm a baby, you know, in the game, like I feel like I'm really young to this. Uh, I'm new to this, but I I'm on the path to be true to this. You know, I'm speaking my truth. I'm speaking about my experiences, but I'm just letting people know like, hey, this is possible and you can do it too. So that's where I am just um, kind of just like a spiral. We come back, we go up, we go down, we go in, we go out. And that's where I am. You know, sometimes I might, um, you know, stretch a little bit, kind of like yoga. You know, I might stretch myself a little bit, but then I come back, you know, and then I stretch a little bit more and then I come back and then I open a little bit more and then, then I ease back in. So that's how life has been for me right now. Yeah. And just so people clearly understand, like, when you say you're stretching a little bit, like, is that like, let's say you just went two days of no food and no water. Is the stretching like, oh, we're going to go three days? Or is the stretching like, we're going to go two days again, but now we're going to do one day of no sleep? Or is it like kind of like a, a mix and a dance between all of that? Yeah, I go how I go how on I feel. Like, the way that I feel, the way my energy is, and the way that I just get inspired, you know, I'm the type of person... Elijah, I'm a Scorpio, you know? <laughs> you know right, come like, on, baby, come on. Sometimes, sometimes, like, I get an obsession, bro. You know, I get a desire that's burning and yearning within me, and I have to, I just have to know, you know? I just have to explore it in a way that some people would say borders on the line of maniacal or even, like, suicide like you're crazy you know and so when i was with you i remember i was with you for like four or five days and i went fully into it you know all those days that we were together you you noticed like how i was doing and how i was operating when i was with you and that was one of the periods that i wanted to dive in so i enjoy doing that when i'm traveling that's the most time that i enjoy just um going head first into autonomy as it were or my own form of autonomy yeah would you say your environment can dictate the, uh, I don't want to say success as like, it's got to be an accomplishment, but more of like uh, a success of at least trying out a different lifestyle. So like, would you say like, how important is the environment when it comes to trying out things such as, you know, going on longer extended dry fast, you know, three days plus with the no food, no drinking, and then maybe even incorporating the no sleeping, like how important is the environment um, for your own life for that? And then uh, if you want to speak on others for that too, I'm curious. Eli, that is such a great question, bro. I love this question, man. I think people, I think we really underestimate the power of environment, you know, and what environment can do. I remember there was a study done where there was a scientist that took like a cell and they put a cell in like a petri dish or something and split the cell into three parts and put them each in three petri dishes and one of the cells became a muscle cell another one became a skin cell and then another one became a fat cell or something like that and the only thing that changed was their environment that was the only control like that was the only thing that changed and they all became something different. So I feel like just like the other day, I had a conversation with Rocky who was talking about how an initiation or like a product initiation or you being with a group of individuals who are all focused, they're going in one direction, that can kind of catapult you into this kind of uh, lifestyle or this kind of living. It can be something that can launch you into a new lifestyle. So um, environment is definitely key. I mean, that's what got me started. When I, when I did that back in early 2020, that was what really launched me into understanding like, whoa, we, we are not limited here. Like we, the only limitation is our imagination. But had I not had the synergy of that group that I was with, I don't think that I would have gone that far, you know what I mean, to find out for myself. So just like they say, you know, only one who is willing to risk going too far can find out how far one can go. Yeah. And just so you guys fully understand, Jerome's gone 10 plus days of no food, no water at all. So I always battle this man. I love him to death, even besides that. But just the fact of the discipline and the practice and the, the enjoyment that he brings to the world. So um, 
let me ask you, Jerome. Let's say someone's surrounded by, uh, you know, meat, dairy eaters. You know, they're surrounded in an environment where uh, people are completely against the idea of change. Um, and let's say they, that's probably really loud. There's like a young kid, he's throwing the chairs. <laughs> My man. All right. Um, let's say someone's in an environment where, like, you know, they hear us speaking right now, and maybe they're looking into fast food, right? No food, uh, starting off with liquids, or no food and no water, and going into a dry fast. But they're in an environment where, like, people are, everyone's against it. Even the people that they're surrounded by, the people that they love, are against it. What is your perspective on how one should approach that if they actually want to, you know, try out this idea of like, hey, let's let's try and fast away from food. Let's try and fast away from drink and let's experiment with that. What are your thoughts? Yeah. So once again, just to kind of, I guess, reframe or re reiterate or say this in a different way, come at it from a different angle. Success can be like effortless in the right environment. But success can feel almost impossible in the wrong environment. You know what I mean? So there were times where, for instance, when I was in California and I was around the Burmese monks and nuns from Myanmar, that environment was so conducive for the conductivity that I leveled up. You know, I was kind of like Goku in the hyperbolic time chamber. I was, ah, ah, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was up there oh, man. meditating, and it was just like peace, peace, you know? And I, had a, I didn't have to worry about a job. I didn't have to worry about responsibilities. I didn't have to worry about any complications. Um, and of course, I don't have a family of my own. I don't have my own children. So there's a lot that I didn't have to worry about. So I had that advantage, so to speak, of being in the right environment for my energy to grow. And for me to cultivate myself in that way was so effortless. It was so easy, you know? And I didn't even notice it until I noticed, you know, until things started to happen and that compound effect started to shoot up, that's when I noticed the changes really starting to take place. Whereas when I'm back with family, you know, maybe with some, some grown folks, you know, who got all the kids around at the cookout, you know, they in the kitchen, boy, you better eat this meat. Boy, you better eat this sausage. Boy, you better eat this chicken. Boy, boy, you, boy you better come over. You know what I'm saying? So I have family members like that that look at me crazy for my habits, you know, for my lifestyles. And in those environments, that kind of negativity is like a wave, it's like a pressure. You know, with the judgment, the eyes of others, the people looking at you. Oh, you're too skinny. Oh, you're too gaunt. Oh, you look different. Oh, you've changed. Oh, do you think you're better than us? Oh, this and that. And all of that, when that starts to pierce you or when you let it penetrate the barriers of your mind, you, you don't stand guard at the gates of your mind, you know, kind of like, um, what was his name? Gandalf or somebody. You shall not pass. You know, yes, you sir. have to kind of be like that in a negative environment. You know, you have to find your own sanctuary, your own, you know, safety, your own altar, your own form of peace, you know? So it's not impossible. Even one of my mentors, Elitam Melamin, he went, you know, he was on his breatharian journey in the middle of um, Akron, Ohio, you know, a place around his family members, around the same people who had the same eating habits that he grew up with, the same, um, you know, the pollution in the air, what have you. And he was able to be on his pranic journey in the middle of that environment. So, you know, if you have the mentality, if you have the mindset to get your grind set, you know, you can push past that adversity. Hey. But if you're not as centered, you know, there's a saying that I love and it says, he who cannot obey himself will be commanded. So if you are not able to obey yourself you will be commanded by somebody somebody will have influence over you and when we're in familiar environments with the energy of you know being in the kitchen and and remembering like sitting here and eating that and having this and partaking in that if we're still in those environments with that same energy still there 
it can be difficult, but nothing is impossible. Yeah. Wow. I love that. You know, um, what I'm about to share here is uh, it's very interesting, and it also ties into kind of uh, Anastasia's um, perspective on urine therapy. And so, um, you know, for me, it was very different because uh, I'm in New Jersey, and uh, I love Kudalini Yoga. And uh, there was, like, there really wasn't anyone, like, teaching. Like, even my teacher, she just had a baby, so she had to stop teaching. Mm. And so I realized the importance of becoming the teacher. Mm. And so if you're in an environment where, like, you don't feel that uh, people around you are of similar, I don't want to say, like, that there's different vibrations, but um, in vibrations that may not be aligned with your current direction or your current being, it's the best time to teach. It's the best time to level yourself up. It's the best time to ground yourself and admit your ignorance and start acquiring knowledge and start acquiring experience and sharing this vulnerably and openly, okay? So what's my point of sharing that? Well, one of the people that we can study, and this is just a theory. I don't have anything to back this up. So take this with a very open heart and an open mind. But Jesus Christ. And Anastasia said that um, she's like, the urine therapy is not needed, right? She was like, you can just go straight into dry. She's like, you can just go straight into the no food and no drink at all. No reason to drink the, your urine. She didn't say it was bad. She didn't say it was good. She just said there was no reason for it because you can just go straight into the dry, which I respected that. And then I started to think, and I'm like, why did Jesus Christ always have his feet washed? And what was he washing his feet in? And it made me kind of think that Jesus was like mainly dry all the time. And he would use other people's pee to wash his feet. Because he understood the power of urine therapy, but he wasn't into the idea of like eating and drinking because of how like the consciousness that he had. And he would eat, I believe so, my perspective based off some of the scriptures I've, I've read. He would eat, but majority of the time, I have a perspective right now that he was completely dry. But he understood the power of urine therapy still, and he would use other people's urine as he was teaching them to wash his own feet with urine. <laughs> That's an interesting perspective. You know, I've never heard that perspective. This is the first time. Yeah, it, I made it up last night. I'm like, huh, like I was trying to cross things, and I think, uh, I think that perspective came to me because I think that's gonna be my life. I, I, I honestly do. <laughs> what other people peeing on you? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Collecting it, Chad Ochocinco does it. He collects all of his football players like pee, and he's like, give it to me, guys, and he soaks his feet in it. So. I probably soak my feet in it. I would never probably put it on my face, but you know, <laughs> that's that's another conversation for a different day. <laughs> that's the next live. That's the next live. <laughs> that's, yeah, y'all gotta come back for that one, okay? Make sure y'all like and subscribe. Mike said, "Hit me up." LOL. <laughs> I got you, Mike. I know you've been on your game too, so I know you've been clean, my guy. I definitely gotta hit you up, bro. Um, cool. So, what do you think are some of the crazy things about this theory? About the theory you just described? No, of autonomy. Like, is oh. there anything that's, like, completely out of a, a alignment with it? You know, like, it's, it's, a, it's good to see the things that are all the great and the glory, but uh, we also got to see both sides of the spectrum. Yeah, I don't think anything is, is too crazy or too, like, not for me. I mean, um, it's not out of the scope or out of the limits of my imagination. Like, I can see it all as plausible. I like to go by Bruce Lee. You know, one of my favorite quotes by him is that there are no limits. There are only plateaus and we must not stay there. We must go beyond them. And sometimes it just takes one person to go beyond them for other people to realize, oh, wow, we can go beyond them, you know? And it's like they didn't know that they could go beyond them until they saw someone go beyond them. So, yeah, we have people like that today. And thankfully, they're speaking out and they're, they're letting us know that they're alive and we can actually speak with them. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, 
I mean, for you, uh, being kind of the gentleman who interviewed uh, that whole experience, was there, um, you know, anything that you felt you wanted to incorporate into your lifestyle uh, from kind of the information that you picked up? Definitely that sense of connection nourishment, you know, connection currency, feeling like um, I'm building a connection bank. Like, you know, I'm like really coming to, to, to grips with, with being around others, exposing myself, allowing myself to be seen and allowing others to be heard and just being a channel, being a conduit, but also holding space, you know, for anyone who needs that. And it's something that, you know, ironically, I've already been doing. So I feel like in a way, certain aspects of autonomy, I'm already like realizing, but I didn't even realize it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. I loved it. The whole experience was just, it's awesome, you know. It, it's it's awesome to have access to this, especially at the current vibration of being that right. Like, majority of the people that we hang around, they're all young, like less than sixty. And I personally feel like if you're left, I mean, we know a gentleman, Christo, who turned his life around at forty. You know, it's like uh, no matter what age you are, it's like uh, like now's the time. Now's the time to like really start to see yourself. And I mean, this is a question that's kind of coming to me right now, but like. What is truth to you? And how do you identify like what your truth is? Because she mm. speaks a lot about truth. You know, she speaks a lot about truth. And I know fasting is a technique that can really like help you kind of like, I don't want to say identify, but like see your truth in a way. So for you, what is truth? And, um, you know, how do you see yourself like just being in aligned with that truth? Yeah, that is a, such a man, man, Elijah, you, you put it down right now, brother. You, you come in with these questions, bro. I love this, man. Thank you. Um, that's a deep question. What is truth? How philosophical, you know? And when the, the first thing that came to my mind when you said that, Eli, was for me, at least, truth is very subjective. It's subjective to the individual, to each and every one of us. And I feel like we're all in sort of a world of our own and we all establish our own truths in this life. And just because you see somebody living out their truth doesn't make that your truth, you know? And when I came away from my first pranic retreat and that breatharian like initiation type thing, after a couple weeks after that, I started breaking away completely from old truths, old paradigms, old ways of thinking, old programming, old you know, little things that were installed inside me that started to become uncoupled, you know, in the layers of my mind. Thoughts of what is nutrition? What are these minerals? What are these vitamins? What is this B12? What are these omega-3s? Like, what, is, what are these, all these things that people say that I need to survive, to, to be a living, to exist, and yet I'm here, here I stand. Here I walk, here I talk, I'm still breathing. And I haven't had any of these things for days. So it's like I broke completely from that old truth and I started to adopt a new truth. Whereas Anastasia, she's talking about a whole different type of truth. Like what is food? You know, do we like we called it food. Does, does that make it food? Is an apple something that we should eat just because we think it's food or did we label it that way? Is our digestive system our digestive system or did we just call it that way? You know, like all these things started to blow my mind when I was speaking to her, like, what do we really know, you know? So yeah, it's just very interesting, the, the topic of truth, but I feel like it's very subjective to each and every one of us. Yeah, and no, it's so funny because like I was literally gonna ask you that uh, next, which was, she spoke about the labels, hmm. you know, labeling food. And uh, I feel like with labels, uh, we form an identity. We form an ex with the label comes an experience. And I think more importantly comes the story that we tell ourselves. And it all starts from the label. And so, um, I don't know, you know, knowing that we've kind of lived our, our whole lives. Everyone on this call, I know that like everyone on here eats um, sometimes, you know. Uh, but knowing that we've kind of spent our whole lives labeling things and you know labeling the apple and labeling the apple as you know nutritious and then having the experience with the apple and allowing for the senses of taste and smell and sight 
to really experience that whole inner being of the apple. If we're someone who wants to entertain this lifestyle of, you know, maybe taking a step back from food and starting to incorporate things such as fasting and dry fasting, do you feel that we should change the label? Should we first? Should we experience it first with our current label? Um, what have you noticed with your own life that has been uh, beneficial when it came to labeling and uh, the ability to take a step back from all these things and allow yourself to experience your vibration in the most natural state? Yeah, so can you repeat the question just one more time? When it comes to uh, labels, like how do we, you know, enter these this lifestyle of, you know, not eating and not drinking? Because I feel like the labels are what kind of pull me back sometimes. Like my, my label, my association, my the story that I tell myself about like certain experiences with the apple, right? Like when I bite into it, the crispiness of it, the crunch that I have, how that electrifies, not, I don't want to say electrifies, but how that is an experience for my senses. But it all started with the label, right? It all started with the label, then came the story that I told myself. And so I'm just curious from your perspective, like were there, like how do you handle labels in your life? when it comes to, you know, fasting, dry fasting, and just how you live. Yeah, you know, I don't want to tell anyone what they should or should not do. But I do know for myself, definitely, when, when you do different things, different things start happening for you, you know? When you do different things, you start to see different things and start to see things differently. So it's kind of like... Um, all those sensory experiences that you describe, the savoriness, the crunchiness, the, the juiciness of biting into an apple. Well, if you never had the apple, if you just left the apple alone and just kind of resided within your own being, you're going to also have some other sensory experiences and some other things and some other feelings that are also just as palpable, maybe a little more subtle at times, but just as palpable as the experiences that you get when you bite into that apple. But it's like on a just a whole new level. Because it's something I guess within our society that's very unconventional, you know, we're used to levels of consumption. And we've gotten used to that we've gotten adjusted to that over time, to where there's a saying Eli, that luxuries once tasted become necessities, you know? And who am I to say that an apple, you know, something that logically we can say that the tree is yielding it, right? It's, it's letting it go, right? It's falling down. Oh, there's no one around, right? I should pick this up. I should eat this, right? It's giving it to me. But what if I were to do the opposite, you know? What might happen? So I guess being brave enough to go into the zone of the unknown, to question the things that you think you know, and try to see if there's a little bit of truth that you didn't see before. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be anybody's truth, but your own. Yeah. I love that. Falling in love with the possibility. Falling in love with the possibility. And I feel that's where my life is right now. Um, you know, because at the very end, um, I, I tuned in. It's so funny. Like, uh, it was like 2 a.m. here in Florida, and I was out on the beach, and I come, you know, back to my phone, and I hop on, and I see, oh, Jerome's live. I'm like, yo, I got to tune into my man's live, and he's interviewing just this this magnificent woman who's, who's really transformed her life, and, you know, she's truly speaking her truth and sharing her message. And I was able to ask a question, and I was so grateful to ask the question. I wish I would have asked it with a little bit more clarity because um, I heard her response and I appreciate her response. Um, and my question was, you know, does she know anyone that's reversed type 1 diabetes? I'm just curious because I know she speaks and teaches a lot of people. And what was her first, what was the first, what, what was the next words that came out of her mouth, Jerome? You say it because you say it good. You say it because you say it good. <laughs> She said, boy, get, get that out of here. Get, get that out of here. <laughs> get, get that out yo, of here. Yo, this girl was like, say it, Jerome. Say how she said it. 
<laughs> nah, you say it. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, she was like, that's easy. Like, listen to that for a second, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of truth behind this, right? We asked her a question. I asked her a question, and Jerome channeled it, and it was, does she know anyone who's reversed type 1 diabetes? She shrugged it off and said, that's easy. And I think this is one of the most important things when it comes to change with anything in life. And this is a message for myself right now. But it's adjusting the mind to realizing the balance that exists inside of you already. The harmony, the musical vibrations that exist in you already. And when you can stroke that guitar and make it sound like a pure angel, everything in life is easy. And so it's like, whatever, like, that's really all I needed to hear. Like, I didn't even need her to tell me that. Because she, she actually didn't say if she knew someone. But she did say, it's easy. And... It's just allowing for my whole vibration, my whole state of being to trust that process, to trust that process and to realize, yeah, it's actually very easy because I'm the one who created this process within me already. And um, I'm excited, man. I'm really excited. Like, I love the idea of no food, no drinking, uh, no sleeping. Like, I love the idea. My longest sleep deprivation is 48 hours and... I felt good. I just, um, I don't, I like taking, I like, like I'm still in the phase where like I like sleep, you know, I like the resting period. Um, but the ability to go without, like honestly with everything, the no food, the no drinking, um, and really tapping into the ability to go within, it's such a remarkable journey and I'm falling in love with the possibility of it and I'm just experimenting right now. So that's where I'm at in the journey. Um, and I'm super grateful, very grateful. Um, any final words you want to share, Jerome, or anything uh, you want to say? Just gratitude, man. You know, just gratitude for this conversation. Thank you for your questions. Like, thank you for going so deep and really just like taking us on a journey through through consciousness and the you know the surreal, like what is possible, and just opening us to our imagination and expanding to what what could happen, you know? What could be, what could be real? Like, I, I think it's so awesome that certain things kind of become a splinter in your mind. Like when a seed is planted and you just start to water it a little bit, a little bit more, you know, it starts to grow. And a mind that's stretched by a new idea can never return to its original dimension. And the things that you're talking about, like, they're just kind of programs, you know, like everything is kind of like a program. But if you don't know that a program exists, you can't download it, you know, you can't install it. So if you don't know that there is a possibility, if you don't know that you could live this way, how do you actualize that? How do you realize that, you know? So, yeah, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand, you know, and I truly believe that. Well, deep gratitude for you as well. Uh, you've been definitely a, a mentor and a great friend on this journey, and um, I always enjoy our conversation. So for those of you guys who aren't following Jerome, make sure y'all go right here, click the follow button. The man does a live like every single day. And if you're lucky, he'll play the flute for you. What do you know? Okay, what a great journey. But, um, yeah, appreciate all you guys. So I think kind of the final thing for everyone here is uh, I would encourage everyone now, especially that we're in 2022, is uh, ask yourself, where are you in the journey? Where are you in the journey? And be truthful about it. You know, what's your relationship with food? What's your relationship with drink? What's your relationship with yourself? And what's the story that you're telling yourself about all of this? So, <sighs> love these talks. They keep me out. They keep me inspired and uh, so much beautiful energy. So, appreciate all you guys. I'm hopping off here. Got to go catch a plane. And uh, yeah, hey, see you guys real flight. soon. Safe flight, brother. Satnam. Safe flight. Satnam, baby. We out. Peace and love. All right. <laughs>